Hi, my name is Jessica and I work with TVA Science Kids. Today we're going to be testing our World Water Monitoring Water Quality Kits Streamside. But before we go over the test instructions, I'm going to go over some safety guidelines. Safety is the number one priority when we're doing water quality testing. Firstly, make sure you have a parent or guardian with you and people know where you are. Secondly, you want to choose a water testing site that has easy access. You want to make sure there's no steep banks, there's no undertow, there's no flooding situation. Uh, you just want to choose a water location that has safe and easy access. Um, thirdly, when you're around water and you're out in the woods, it's just a good idea to use bug spray, sunscreen, and when you're in the water, we recommend wearing a life jacket. What you'll need to conduct these experiments is, of course, your test kit. Everything you need should be inside, but just check to make sure everything is there before you start this experiment. Uh, you especially want to make sure that you have your comparison cards, because this is what you're going to use to help record your results. You'll record your results on your data sheet, so you need to make sure that you have a data sheet and something to write with. And then you're going to need some sort of timer. I usually use my phone for a timer, but you could use a digital timer. And then, of course, I always have my life jacket. So the first test we're going to do in our water quality testing is we're going to test water temperature. So what you need is the beaker and you'll take the lid off. So this black strip right here, this is our thermometer and it's recorded in degrees Celsius. Right now it's recording the air temperature, but we're going to hold it under the water completely submerged for 30 seconds. That's 30 Mississippis. And then we're going to check and see what the water temperature is. So the brightest lit number, usually it's a green color, that is the accurate water temperature. So you're going to take that number and you're going to record it on your data sheet in degrees Celsius. That is your water temperature. Once you have your water temperature recorded, you're going to want to pour out some of the water to this fill line, this dotted line on the outside. Just pour a little bit out and then you can put the lid back on and take it back to your test station. This next experiment that we're going to do is for our dissolved oxygen test. What you need is the glass vial and two dissolved oxygen tablets. You're going to take the lid off of your vial and you're going to completely submerge it in your beaker full of water. You want all the air bubbles to come out. So once you have the uh, vial completely filled to the top, stick it on the lid of your beaker. Then you'll open your dissolved oxygen tablets. Now you want to be really careful, these are kind of delicate, so uh, you don't want it to crumble. Take the dissolved oxygen tablets out and one at a time, place it in your vial. Okay, now to start your chemical reaction, you're going to agitate your vial for up to four minutes. So what you do is you're going to take your hand like this, like you're screwing in a light bulb, and you're going to shake it back and forth. And this is where you're going to use your timer. So you can start a timer on your phone for four minutes. Once your four minutes are up, you're going to place your vial on your beaker lid so you can let those chemicals rest. And then you're going to move on to the next experiment. Next up is our pH test. What you're going to take is your test tube and you're going to take the top off. So um, with the test tube, you're going to place it in your beaker and you might not, not have enough water, if so you can just tilt your beaker to the side, but you want to fill your test tube all the way up, completely fill it up again. So, and when you pull it out, there is a little line on the outside of your test tube, it's a 10 milliliter line. You want to get the water back down to the 10 milliliter line. And there's a way that you can do it, you're kind of flicking the water out, so you're just going to kind of pop it out just a little bit like that. And this is just water and you're outside, so you can just kind of flick it just a little bit. So keep flicking it until you get to the 10 milliliter line. So, and then once you get to the 10 milliliter line, you're going to put your single foil packet, which is your pH tablet, you're going to put that in. So this is also a very delicate chemical tablet, so try not to touch it and put it directly into your test tube. and then put your lid back on. Now you're gonna take your test tube and you're just gonna flip it over. And then you're gonna flip it back, and you're gonna flip it over, flip it back, flip it over, and just keep flipping it until you start to see uh, a chemical reaction, which in this instance is going to be a color change. 
Now you want to keep flipping your test tube until um, most of the tablet is dissolved. There still can be little pieces floating around, but you want to make sure that there's not a full tablet left. So once your, um, once your tablet is dissolved, put this also on your beaker lid and let it rest, and we'll move on to the last experiment. So the last test that we're going to do with our water quality testing is we're going to look at the turbidity. So turbidity is how clear or how much suspended matter is in the water. So you're going to take your comparison card and there's a little half circle line on it. What you're going to do is you're going to line that half circle up with the edge of your beaker and then you're going to look down at your secchi disc and you're going to see whether um, the turbidity, the secchi disc looks close to the zero JTU, the 40 JTU, or 100. Now, it may not look exactly like any of them, so we're gonna let you draw conclusions of what range you think it is between zero to a 100. Once you've decided what the turbidity level is, remember to mark it on your data sheet and add JTU next to it. Now that our chemicals have rested, we're going to uh, record the rest of our data using our comparison card. So you're going to take your vial and you can line it up on the dissolved oxygen and you're going to see whether it closely resembles 0 ppm, 4 ppm, or 8 ppm. Mine's pretty, pretty darkly colored, so I'm going to say mine's between a 4 and an 8 and I'm going to draw a conclusion to what number I think it is and I'm going to write it down on my data sheet. Then you can take your uh, test tube and you're going to line it up in the middle on your pH section of your comparison card. And you're going to look at whether it is most closely, what the color most closely compares to. And I think mine is closer to an 8, so I'm going to write down 8 on my data sheet. Now that you've finished with your experiment, the last thing you need to do is clean up and go. So since this is just Pond Creek stream water, you can just pour it right back into where you found it. And it's important to make sure that you return everything back to the visitor station or the ranger station or wherever you checked it out from. Um, don't worry about getting rid of these chemicals. A ranger will do it for you. So just put everything, including your trash, back into the beaker. So once you've got everything back in and the lid on, return this to where you got it along with your data sheet and hopefully you'll get a little prize.